to tight. I'm speaking to us of disposition and I'm talking about attitude because you have to have the right attitude and you got to have the right uh, heart in order to get this thing called tithe and offering. Okay, you follow me? So I need you to understand something. We talked about last week stewardship. We understand as stewards that we don't own anything. Say amen when you can. You don't own anything. Your car, your house, your clothing, your, your money in the bank. You don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. We are only stewards or managers of the very thing God has allowed us to manage over. So, so I want us to understand something when we talk about giving back to God as we're referring to tithes and offering. What we're referring to, church, tonight is your disposition and your heart as related uh, to give back to God. Now, this is having been, having been a very issue in the body of Christ among these lines, and I'm, I'm very familiar with the arguments as it relates to tithing and, offer, and offering. I am not uh, ignorant of what people believe and what people think as it relates to that, but I, what I want to do tonight is I want to show you the heart of a giver. I want to show you how your life cannot be what it could be if you don't don't have the right disposition to God. I need you to get that because we're talking about stewardship. We're talking about understanding nothing belongs to us. Everything belongs to God. I double dog dare you tonight. If you ever want to see God really uh, to operate in faith for real, you give back to God and you will watch God move in a way to show you that he's God. I need you to understand tonight that giving back to God is really, is really a matter of faith. I want you to get that. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm not telling you what I just believe. I'm telling you what I know, that faith and giving goes together. Uh, because you really don't have faith uh, when you have all the answers. You don't have faith when you can see your way through it. Faith is saying that God, even when I don't have all the answers, even when I can't see my way through, I believe, God, that you will make a way when I can't make a way. But because I love what you love, and because I understand your message and what you're trying to accomplish in the kingdom, I give because I am a kingdom investor and I'm a partner with the king. Now, I need you to grasp that because I need you to really get this concept. Jesus said it long ago, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, wait a minute, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, I, 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 now, I told you on Sunday that we as a body of believers that meets at 1483 Brookhaven Drive in South Haven, Mississippi, we tie. I, 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 I get that. I told y'all that Sunday. I understand many congregations don't like using the word tithing for whatever reason. I'm not, I'm not, we're not talking about them tonight. What I'm telling you tonight is biblically, when I speak of tithing, I'm talking biblically what tithing and offering really looks like because it's a disposition. It's a heart thing when it comes between you and God. Now, I need to say that, I need, to, need us to really get that tonight. I want you to know if you as an individual, if you have flesh and blood and God bless you with finances, God is looking for you to give back to him. Now, I need to, I need to say this. There are those who believe that tithing, uh, they say, I don't tithe because it's under the old law. I heard that before. I've heard people suggest the reason you, we don't have to tithe and give up offering is because that's under the Mosaic law. And because it's under the Mosaic law, I don't have to give back to God and I can give whatever I want because we're not under that law. However, I differ with that, with that belief because I showed you on Sunday that tithing, uh, I'm speaking of tithing pre-law, before there was ever a law under the Levitical priesthood that the Israelites are supposed to give a tithe. I showed you on Sunday, the first time we read about tithing in the Bible, 
is in Genesis chapter 14, when Abraham went to war, when his nephew Lot was kidnapped, when he went to war and brought him out, the Bible says Abraham gave a tenth of, his, of, the, of the spoils of war to King Melchizedek. Now, I told you on Sunday that King Melchizedek was king and priest, which is unheard of. Because you're a king, you can't be a king and priest, but for some reason or another, we find King Melchizedek being king and priest. And the Bible said he resembles the Son of God. Now, without there ever being a law, without there ever being a law that says give a tithe, 500 years, 400 years before the Levitical priesthood was even established in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham gave a tenth. Now my question becomes, how did he how did he know to give a tent when there was no law to suggest to give a tent? Let me tell you, because he didn't need a law. All he had to do is have a flashback to see what God brought him out of. And when he saw the flashback of what God brought him out of, I don't need a law to tell me to give back to God. I have enough faith. And I have been, I have a, a relationship with God to know that because of what God has brought me out of, I give because it shows my heart. Oh, I, I hope y'all see it tonight. I need you, I need to also suggest that tithing is not a way that we get right standing with God. That's not what I'm suggesting. I need to be very clear on that. Tithing, it tithing becomes wrong when you think when you tithe or give up your offering is going to make you have right standing with God. I would suggest with that mindset, that is another gospel. Y'all get that. I want you to understand, yes, you tithe. Yes, you're supposed to give up your offering, tithe to offering to God. But it's not for right standing with God. I'm already have right standing with God because I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's not my works that makes me righteous. It's the works of Jesus that makes me right. I need to be very clear on that. So we're not suggesting tonight that you give a tithe and offering because of your right standing, or to have a right standing relationship with God. I am already have a right standing relationship with God outside from my works. But because I love God, and because I know what God, what God wants the body of Christ, the kingdom of God does to do, I give back to God. I hope y'all followed it. Any questions on that? I want you to get that clear. I don't want you to get that confused. See, I, I'm a giving does not make me righteous, but righteous people give because God wants you to give back to him. Not based upon a law. If you need a law to tell you to give, it, I, I question your relationship with God. When I see the heart of God, when I know the heart of God and what God wants from the kingdom and from the body, I give out of my heart back to God because I know what, who God is. Now, now I need to be very clear. Now, I want you to turn with me real quickly to Matthew chapter 23. I want to show you something. Matthew chapter 23, I want to show you something before I show you the reason you, you are being defeated. Let me show you something. Let's. I hope I get done tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. But let me show you this. Matthew chapter 23. And um, I want you to see something because this is Jesus. You know, those who got the old King James, this, this writing should be in red. Amen. You know, when it's in red, that means Jesus said it. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, that's the 1611, the King, the King James. But I want to, I'm reading from the New Living, but I want to show you something, what Jesus said, because Jesus want us to know tithing is not to obtain righteousness. I want you to see that. Now, now Matthew chapter 23, verse number 23, I want you to notice what Jesus says. Notice what Jesus says. He says, what sorrows await you teachers of the religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, watch this, for you are careful to tie even the tiniest income from your herb garden, but you ignore the most and the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tie. Yes. But do not neglect the most important things. Okay, okay, y'all missed it. Let me read it from, from Luke perspective. Luke chapter 11. 
and verse number 42. Luke chapter 11, verse number 42. Watch what Luke says. Luke says, what sorrows await you Pharisees? For you are careful to tie even the tithe's income from your herb gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You should tie. Yes, but do not neglect the important thing, the more important thing. I need you to notice what Jesus says. Jesus says, Pharisees, y'all tie. Y'all do great with your income. You tie. But I want you to know something in your tithing back to God. I, I need you to know, but you neglect the most important things, justice, mercy, and faith. Now, he says, you should tie. Y'all say it. Jesus said it. I didn't say it. Jesus. You should tie. You should give back a tenth of earnings to, to back to God. But he says, don't neglect justice and the love of God. Don't neglect mercy and faith, but you should tie. I need you to say, I didn't say it tonight. Jesus said it. Jesus wants them to understand it's not tithing that's going to make your right standing with God. You should do it. But don't neglect the other things that matter as well. Oh, I hope y'all see it tonight. Now, if that be the case, tithing has to be from your heart. I don't believe God does not want you to give back to him if you don't want to do it. He don't want that type of relationship. He don't want to force you in relationship with him. He wants the relationship to be natural. He wants you to, to fall so in love with him that you say, whatever you need me to do, Jesus, I do it. Now, I need you to see something. Now, the question, the, this, this is the thing I want to show you now. Reasons we are be, we're being defeated. I need you to see that. I want to suggest tonight, maybe, just maybe, some of us are defeated in life because we have not got the right disposition to, towards God. I, be, I believe tonight that maybe some of us are being defeated in every area of our lives only because we have not learned yet what it really means to understand, to love God for real. I, I'm afraid that sometimes we hold back our earnings to God and we want to hold back our earnings to God, but with the same breath say, I love God. Oh, it's no, no emojis tonight. See, see sometimes we, we find ourselves honoring God with our lips, but our hearts be far from him. And tonight, I'm challenging us as the believers at the Northwest Church of Christ that if we're going to do great things in the kingdom of God, if God is going to be blessed with what we do and how we do it, I want us to be very clear tonight from the word of God that God wants us to be kingdom investors in the kingdom of God to such a point where we give 10 plus back to God because we understand grace giving because of who he is and what he's done in our lives. Now, I want to show you the number one, the reason, number one, the reason you've been defeated is because you have no allegiance to God. Oh, somebody put that in the chat box. That, that, that one of the reasons I believe that we sometimes go in areas of our lives where things are not going as the way we want them to go and the way we would love them to go is all because we oftentimes don't have any allegiance to God. But I want you to know tonight that if you're going to really understand what God and uh, who he is and what he wants to do in your life, if you don't want to be defeated, I want you to know you got to have some type of loyalty you got to have some type of allegiance to God because if you don't have allegiance to God, you will struggle. Oh my God. I need you to see that tonight that it's not enough for you to just say I'm with God, but you don't show it with your heart. See, it's not about the money, but because, you're, because you are so attached to it, you don't even play about your money. You will cut up if they get $5 wrong on your paycheck, God knows you don't play about your money and he knows you're connected to it. That's why he says where your treasure is, there be your heart be also. And he wants to know 
if you really want to know what a man cares about, watch where he put his money at. Spend his money. I want you to know, if you really want to know what you care about, watch what you invest in. Because wherever you put your money at, that's what you're telling yourself and everybody else. That's what's important to me. Now, I know that's hard. That's a hard, hard, a hard word because many of us want to say we love God, but have no allegiance to him. And I'm suggesting tonight, I'm going to tell you why you are defeated before you are defeated going into, going into a, 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 a situation. You're defeated before the battle even begins because there's no allegiance. I need you to see something. Now, in Joshua, if y'all know the book of Joshua, go to the book of Joshua. Turn to the book of Joshua. Go survey it real quickly, and, we'll, and I'll be done. I want you to know Joshua is now leading the children of Israel. Y'all know that God, God, God is about to allow them to go to the promised land. Moses has died. Moses, Josh, Joshua is the new leader, and he's about to lead them to the promised land. Now, as he's about to lead them to the promised land, they cross over Jordan River. God is about to allow them to conquer Canaan because God says Canaan is yours. Canaan is in your hands. I'm giving it to you. I'm on, it's already yours, even though you haven't went over there and got it yet. Um, it's, it's, the per, it's, the, it's the perfect uh, way God is saying, I'm going to give it to you. Although you have not went and possessed the land yet, it's already yours. And God says it's yours. Canaan is yours. But when you get to Canaan, you got to fight. Now, remember what I said. I ain't gonna, I'm just going to put a pin note. Notice Canaan is not heaven. Canaan represents fruitfulness. It represents where you flourish. It represents where God wants to see you grow. God wants to see you grow in your Canaan. Everybody, everybody I want you to know God wants to see you flourish in Canaan. But I need you to understand Canaan ain't about you. It's about God. But God wants you to see you to flourish in something that's about him. Now, I need you to see it. Now, y'all remember the walls of Jericho, the first city, oh, my God, that they are about to overcome is Jericho. Now, you remember Jericho is the place God says, what I want you to do, walk around Jericho seven times. And on the seventh time, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, he says, yeah, I want you shout. Everybody needs to shout. And the Bible says that the walls will come tumbling down. Y'all, Now, y'all know the story. They went to Jericho, the first city in Canaan, and they conquered Canaan. Somebody's put in the, in the chat box, they conquered, conquered Canaan. I just want y'all to connect the dots. It's the first city. It's the first city that God gave them victory in. But God says, all the Canaan is yours, but this is the first city. But I want to show you something, the reason of why or how they became defeated. Now, look at Joshua chapter, chapter seven. Chapter seven. And uh, I want you to look at verse number two with me. Joshua chapter seven, verse two. The Bible says Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, Beth Haven. When they returned, they told Joshua, they, there is no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 300 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all our people struggle to go up there. Now, watch what he says. We're going to our next city. Our next city is AI. But Joshua, we don't need everybody because we already know the land is ours. God already told us that. But we don't need to send all the men. We're the men out. Just set a few up there and we'll conquer, we'll conquer AI. Look at verse number 14, four, verse four, rather, verse four. The Bible says uh, uh, properly 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. Y'all see that? The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as Coral, and they killed about 36 
who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn event and their courage melt away. Wait a minute. We just conquered Jericho, the first city. But now we in the second city, AI. We didn't send a lot of men up there, but we went up there and got defeated. And now we scared to fight because we got defeated. Look at, look at verse number six. So Joshua and the elders of Israel took their clothes in dismay, threw dust on their heads and bowed down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. Watch this, verse seven. Then Joshua cried out, O sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you're going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side. Lord, watch this. What can I say now that Israel, Israel has fled from his enemies? For when the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it, they will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. And then they will, this will happen. I mean, what will happen to the honor of your great name? Now, watch this. Joshua don't understand. Joshua is trying to figure out how in the, why in the world would God allow us to conquer Jericho, but bring us an AI and cause us to be defeated? Have you ever wondered how in one part of your life it seemed like it was going grand and then the next part of your life, the next chapter, it seemed like you can't make it through? Have you ever had a great week last week and everything was working out, but they came into a new week and it seemed everything was going downhill? Joshua is trying to figure out, God, what in the world is going on? And he's about to tell, God is about to tell us the reason why you're being defeated is because there's no allegiance to God. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 10. The Bible says, but the Lord said to Joshua, watch this. Get up while you land on your face like this. Israel has sinned and broken, oh my God, my covenant. Okay, y'all see it. The reason they're being defeated because Israel have sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things I commanded, watch this, must be set apart from me. Okay, y'all got to see it tonight. I got to get, get y'all to see it. God says, the reason you being, offend, uh, being, being defeated, because there's no allegiance to me. There's no loyalty to me. You broke the covenant. Uh, because in biblical times, when a king and a subject had a covenant, the king says, I take care of all your needs. And the subject says, I'm going to have allegiance to you no matter what. I don't care how bad life looks. I'm still going to be loyal to the king. I don't care if I don't understand. I'm still going to be loyal to the king. I don't care who going to turn their back on the king. I'm still going to be loyal to the king. And the problem in the body of Christ, the many Christians, the reason many of us are being defeated is because we are not loyal to God. And I want you to know tonight and whenever you rob or, or rob God of his tithe and his offering, you are showing God there is no allegiance to him. He says, you have stolen from me because the thing that you have stolen was set aside for me. Okay, go back to chapter six. Go to Joshua six. Joshua six. Let me go back. Joshua chapter six and verse number 17. I want you to see it. Joshua chapter 6, verse 17. And did you see it? Jericho is what? The first city. Somebody put in the chat about first city. I want y'all to connect this dot. It's the first city. It's first city, first city. Joshua chapter 6, verse 17. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed. Watch this. As an offering to the Lord, only Rahab, the prostitute, and the others in her house will be spared for she protected our spies. Verse 18, do not take anything set apart for destruction or you yourselves will be completely destroyed. 
and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or Aaron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought to his treasurer. Wait a minute. God says in verse number 10 in, in chapter 7, the reason you are being defeated because there is no allegiance to me. You broke the covenant. And because you broke the covenant, it lets me know you're not loyal to me the way you say you are loyal to me. You stole from me because you stole from me from the first city that I gave you. If y'all paid attention on Sunday and on Wednesday, it's something about the first fruit. <laughs> It's something about the first, the first, the first fruit, the, the first earning. God, it's something about the first because God knows when, when, when I get the first, it lets me know I'm number one, I'm priority. And I want you to know that, yes, y'all defeated them in Jericho, uh, but it's the first city. And since it's the first city, everything, the spoils of war don't belong to y'all. I'm going to take care of y'all because I'm giving you Canaan. All the Canaan is yours. Oh my God. But don't mess with the, the spoils of war in the first city. Y'all remember the table on Sunday? He says, now all of that is your table. But this spoils of war is my table. But now you have touched the very thing first that I don't want you to touch. And as a result of touching what I don't want you to touch, he says destruction is going to be on you, and he wants you to know from that very point, that's the reason you are being defeated. Y'all follow that tonight? I need you to see what he said. He says you're being defeated because there's no allegiance to me. I want to know, is, are you really loyal to God? Uh, uh, do you really trust God? Do you really walk by faith in God? Or do you have to see God working it out before you to trust him? So you got to know every detail of what God is doing before you say, God, I'm going to trust you, even though I don't know the, the aftermath, I don't know how it's going, but God, I trust you enough to still give back to you and bless the kingdom of God because of the fact I know, God, you're with me. Do you have, you have allegiance to God? But not only that, not only, not only are you being defeated because you have no allegiance to God, but secondly, you are being defeated because you have dethroned God from your heart. I need you to see that. You have, you have dethroned God from your heart. Okay. 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 Let me say it another way. I want you to know everybody on here tonight, every one of us, there is someone or something on the throne of your heart. Say it again. Everybody on here tonight, from the preacher to the member, there is someone or something on the throne of your heart. Say it one more time, preacher. Everybody who's gathered in, in this platform tonight, young, old, in between, black, white, don't matter. Every one of us have someone or something on the throne of our hearts. I want you to know if God is not on the throne of your heart, ruling it or reigning over it, someone or something else is. In other words, it's from your heart that you make decisions. It's with your heart that you decide whether or not you're going to give or whether or not you're going to keep it to yourself. It's whatever has, has ruled or has reigned over your heart will determine whether or not, amen, God is one who's ruling it. Y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. See, it don't take enough, amen, amen. It don't take a whole lot for us to get allowed God to be dethroned from, the, from our hearts. I need you to see something. Look at verse number 20 again, Joshua chapter seven, verse number 20. Um, watch what the Bible says, verse 19 rather. Watch what it says. Then... Joshua said to Achan, now Joshua called everybody out. He says to Achan, he says, my son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, 
by telling the truth. Make your confession and tell me what you've done. Don't hide it from me. Now watch this. Aiken, watch this. Aiken replied, verse 20, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon and 200 silver coins and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. God says the reason why you've been defeated is because Achan is among you. And because Achan is among you, he says Achan stole from the Lord's treasure the spoils of war, and he disregarded the message that God told him. In other words, God says those things were going to be for my treasure. But the text says Achan wasn't even thinking about what the Lord's plans were because the text says when he was, after they had defeated, was defeated the enemies in Jericho, the Bible says, he says, I saw, oh my God, I need y'all to see it. Achan had dethroned God off his heart because his attention was not no longer on God. But his attention was, was only on what he saw. Now, the issue I have with that is all the Israelites saw the same thing. They saw the robe. They saw the silver. They saw the bronze. They saw the gold. But, but the some of the Israelites, the Israelites said, we're not going to, because the Lord said that's a part of his treasure. Now, wh what's going on with Achan? Achan has dethroned God from his heart. And I'm afraid tonight that many of us have, have dethroned God from our hearts where we allow ourselves to get caught into what we want rather than what God wants. And whenever you dethrone God from your heart, you are going down the road of being defeated. Things won't turn out right. Things won't, won't happen the way you wanted them to happen. You will be paying, amen, paying bills and paying bills and God will put holes in your pocket all because God says, I'm not the throne. I'm not on the throne of your heart. And tonight, what I want to, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you, have you thrown God, did dethrone God from your heart? Have, have you, have you had the wrong disposition to say, I ain't going to give back to God, but God says, you need me. And here's the interesting thing about God, church. It's, it's amazing that you can conquer Jericho, but you having issues with AI. Okay, I know I have. I got to be real, church, tonight. Have you ever been in a place in your own life where you was able to conquer your Jericho, but you had trouble with conquering AI, and there was more enemies in Jericho than there was in AI, and you trying to figure it out, but God says, you don't understand. I'm not on your heart. I have not been the one ruling it. You have allowed everything else to rule your heart. You have allowed everything else to be number one in your life. And God has a mentality that if he can't be number one, he refused to be number two. And God says, I need your heart. I need to rule. And, and, and the sad thing about, about Achan, Achan thought, what happened in Jericho was going to stay in Jericho just to find out it followed him to Ai. <laughs> he, he thought that he wasn't going to hurt nobody by taking the spoils of war and he ended up affecting everybody. Can I tell you, you got to be careful of when you are leading a group of people and when you are the person who, who folk are leaning to that you can affect your family by your own decisions. You can affect those you lead by bad decisions you make because you have taken God off the throne of your heart. And here you have a clear example that Achan had an aching heart. Achan had a heart that says that I don't have an allegiance to him. I got a heart What he says, God is not the one ruling on it. And I want us to understand tonight God is looking for your heart to be centered 
Well, you say, God, I'm going to give to you. I'm not going to think about God. If you get a dollar tomorrow, God says, at least give me a dime out of every dollar. Can I have a dime? God says, if you give me a, God says, you, if you give me the dime, give me the first, I'll bless the 90. I'll bless the rest. But at least, but at least give me mine first. Give me mine first. And grace giving says, God, because you've been so good, I give you more than a dime. God, you've been so good to me. I give you more than a dime. I give you a quarter because God, you've been so good to me. And what I'm trying to tell you tonight, God wants to deal with your heart. I'm weary of saints who need a command to give. Why do you need a command to give if he's been good to you? I'm, I'm weary of saints who need something in black and white that says do this or don't do that. But when you really are in relation with God and you have fallen in love with Jesus, you don't need a law. All you got to do is look at a, have a flashback. You know what he took you, took you out of. You know the stuff that, that, that God helped you out of that nobody else knows about. You know the stuff that happened and you still trying to figure out how in the world did it happen, God, with all the stuff that I, I was against, all the my back was against the wall, but all of a sudden you showed up and did what you did. God, you know, I don't need a law. But let me tell you the reason why you're defeated. You're defeated. You have no allegiance to God. You, you are defeated because you have dethroned God from your heart. But you are defeated because you rely on self-sufficient. You're, you're more, you're, you're more self-sufficient versus God sufficient. In other words, there is no, there is no reliance on God. You're more independent than you are God dependent. I want to show you this. Look at verse number 20. The Bible, let me read verse 20 again. The Bible says, Achan replied, it is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Watch this. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, two silver, 200 silver coins, and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. Watch this. I wanted them so much that I took them. They are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with silver buried deeper than the rest. I want you to know what he's saying. He says, I saw it. I wanted it. So I took it. Y'all see that? You see the defeat? He saw, he covenanted, and he took it. Okay, let's try it one more time. He saw it. He covenanted it. He wanted it. So he took it. To covenant something is to suggest that I wanted it so bad because of the fact of what I saw. It looked good to me. Covetousness suggests that I took it because I thought it would satisfy me. It's almost the attitude of being self-sufficient versus being God-sufficient. In other words, I took it. It looked good. It looked like a lot. We're going into a new land. We're going to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I still want more. <laughs> I'm going to a land where I ain't gonna have, I ain't gotta build no houses because my enemies already built them. I ain't gotta plant no vineyards because it's already been planted, but it ain't enough for me. I still need more to be satisfied. I still need more to be self-sufficient versus God-sufficient. And here's the, here's the word tonight. Some of us are guilty of being more self-sufficient than we are God-sufficient. That we are guilty of the fact that we won't give back to God because we want to keep and hold our hands closed tight because we want God to continue to bless us, but we don't want to give back to him to the kingdom. Can I tell you something tonight? You will never be able to beat God giving. You won't be able to. You won't be able to beat God given. And I know it's a struggle tonight. Some people say, but Richard, you don't understand. You know, I'm trying to make ends meet. It's all I got. I'm afraid if I give that I ain't gonna be able to make ends meet. But that's where faith comes in. That's, that's faith where God says, I gotta test your faith to see do you trust me enough that I'm gonna do what I say I'm gonna do. 
oh, life has taught me, God has taught me, I trust God enough. There have been moments where I didn't understand. I in my moments, God, I don't, but God, I trust you enough to know that you, to know, to keep your will. Now, here's the thing, giving, giving for the Christian should not be an option. Amen, saints. It, it, it should not be an option. Why, why, why? Because God, God, we're building a kingdom culture. And God has something he wants us to do. I told you on Sunday, we are a movement with a message. I need y'all to get that. When we assemble on Sunday, we're not just assembling just to have a good time and to shout and to scream. No, 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 no. Now we can do that, but that's not our, that's not our number one priority as a church. Our number one priority. We are a movement with a message. And by being a movement with a message, we got to get the message out. And God knows the only way to get the message out, we need finances to get it out. We need, we need, we have our ministries that we have in Northwest. We have to give money in order for those ministries to be effective in order to be able to, to uh, uh, in order for us to influence other people to fall in love with Jesus. God, it's about God's heart. Now, God gonna take care of his, God gonna take care of his house. But God uses our the finances he gives us as stewards to see what you're gonna do with it. I I I one of one of my greatest prayers, and uh me and a couple of saints in Northwest, we 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 compete on this. But my but my but my biggest prayer is God, God, I want to be the biggest giver in Northwest. Why is that? Because I'm the biggest giver at Northwest. You know that you know it's a prayer that 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 God will answer. I want to be why is that? That's a prayer that nobody really prays. You know why people don't pray their prayer? Because they don't think God to get do it. But here's the thing, here's the thought. If I'm praying that I'm the biggest giver at Northwest, that means God is blessing me. Enough that I can bless the kingdom and my and my family still be blessed as a result. Because I'm a kingdom investor. Because I see the need. I see what God wants. And I bless the kingdom with it. Now, now we are moving with a message. And that's been on my heart for the last several months. Man, we're, we're a church, but we're a movement. Whenever we, whenever we cease to, whenever we cease to, whenever we cease and not stop and stop becoming a movement with a message, whenever we cease to do that, we cease to obey God. We cease to, to be what God wants us to be. But we are a movement with a message. Tonight, I want that to be on your heart. I want you to know you don't have to be defeated tonight. You don't, let me hear tonight, you don't give because you're trying to obtain righteousness. That's not why you give. If that's why you give, stop giving. Did you hear what I just said? If you think you're trying to give to, get, to be right with God, that's not why. You missed the message. I'm not giving to be right with God. I'm, I'm giving because I'm already right with God. I'm giving because I love God. That's why I give the way I give. And I'm here to tell you tonight, God want to bless your life. God wants to do some amazing things. But man, when we become kingdom investors, we create a culture where we're contagious givers. And when you are a contagious giver, you'll be, God's going to blow your mind. I'm trying to tell you, I wish I had some witnesses tonight who can testify, they just try God for themselves, God will blow your mind. But if you're trying to hold out on God and you think just because I give some, well, I gave some, well, God said it won, it won your best. You don't tell, you don't tell energy you gave some. Hello, and you, you don't tell, you don't tell Wells Fargo, I gave, I gave you some. You don't tell them that. No, 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 no. You give because you give back, you pay them bills because you don't want to be walking, you don't want to. You don't want to be phoneless. You don't want to be homeless. You give because because why is why the why why does God be, have to be the only one that you got to say He know your heart, but you don't tell nobody else that. You don't say that to anybody else because we have dethroned God from our hearts. We have made God second when He ought to be first. But I want you to know, maybe you need to check tonight. Am I being defeated because I'm really not all in with God the way I say I am? God bless you tonight. I pray that the word 
We have free course in your life tonight that it will you will be a blessing to your life that you can live and be what you need to be for the cause of Jesus. Any mm -hmm. questions tonight? Tonight as we close, any questions? I said a whole lot and uh, I was trying to get be respectful of time. Uh, any questions tonight? Please, please, please. Uh, uh, Sister Carter, do you have any questions? No, any, sir. No questions. No questions. Any other any any questions that nobody didn't put in in the chat? Any other questions? Amen. I pray tonight, uh, and I know the I know this word. I know this word is burning, and y'all thinking, but it's a it's an individual thing. It's between you and the Lord. It's between you and God. Uh, but your tithe and your offering ain't because of a law. It's because of my heart and my disposition. Say God has been good to me, and I understand the things of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so I'm praying tonight that you will embrace the word of God and you say, God, okay, I get it. I get it, God. Don't, don't, don't go out there and pay everything else and say, God, I'm give you, you wait till Sunday to say, okay, I'm going to give. No, you can, you've already made up your mind. I got already know what I'm going to give to you. You've been too good to. Me. That's the word tonight. Any prayer requests as we close, any prayer requests.